Welcome back to my channel. This is Bob. We have another message for you today. I'm thinking about on the way home. You know, I'm not the type of guy who makes videos as he's driving, as some other people do. Oh, my God. It drives you crazy. But here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking about, you know, I get reflective on my way home a lot of times. And I think about my life from time to time. And on one hand... I think it's a huge failure. Um, on the other hand, I think it's a tremendous success. And on the third hand, I see tremendous um, accomplishments. And on the fourth hand, I see no accomplishments. Now, how can all that be true? Well, being 55 years old, you know, what have I accomplished, really, you know? I, I would say I've become a person, I've developed, I've, um, you know, you know, reached a point where I think I have a higher discernment level and an, a one that's necessary to survive in the world. I think that's the most important thing you know so uh philip johnson professor at uh ucal berkeley passed away about a year ago he wrote a lot of books um the wedge of truth also uh um what was it about darwin defeating darwin Darwinism. I saw him speak. He came to a church I was attending in Boston Park Street Church in around year 2001 or two, I would say. My point is that he had a saying, you got to have your baloney detector out. That's the single most ingredient, the single most tr important trait we need. But we need it from Jump Street. We need it from K1. <laughs> um and we don't get it. And um, we're at the mercy of the whims of Satan. You know, S Satan wants to sift us and to turn us into all this monster. Um, or just a, a person dulled to God's creation. He wants to steal, kill, and destroy us and take us down to hell, well, hell with him because he knows his time is short. This is biblical stuff. This is uh, based on what the Bible says, okay? So where, where, where does it lead? The single most important thing I think I've developed is a, dis a discernment, um, truth. You know the <laughs> the quest for truth. You know, but, but you know, I, I do play chess a lot. Um, well, I, ha I over the years um, never been in a. Well, I did a go to a chess club once or twice, but um, you know, and I see myself. It's great because you can play people over all over the world, and you know, I have a little thing that says something about Jesus, so I look at it as a way to get the gospel out. Or just that one word, Jesus. What's my point about chess? Well, uh, chess, I heard Bobby Fischer. You know, there's a lot of great videos on YouTube. He is interviewed by um, the great, what's his name? <laughs> Talk show host. Um, I'll think of his name in a minute. Dick, Dick Cabot, Dick Cabot. And he's interviewing Bobby Fischer. What a, Dick Cavett has to be the greatest um, conversationalist I've ever seen. It's really no, I mean, Conan O'Brien's pretty good, but I don't think Jimmy Kimmel or all these new people are, are, are really that well. Oh, good. Um, but Dick Cavett was definitely the best. Well, he, they're talking about chess being the search for truth. And to hear this coming from Barbie Fisher, who's, incredible intelligent person you know the moves he can calculate in i mean 
he was, I was just looking at today, he was the number one chess player for like five years from like 69 to 75, and then he just dropped out of sight. But uh, but that's, that's what we need, this truth. We need truth because, you know what, we're hit with these lies, you know. It's, it's almost like a running joke, but um, I'm reading this book. I'm going to try to tie this one together. Dorothy Kilgallen. She was a, an incredible, um, how much time do I get here? Uh, writer, uh, journalist, came from a family of, of writers. And she got in the business and she had success, tremendous success. She And she was always asking the editor, editors to do ambitious things. And she ended up going around the world. She was the first woman to travel around the world commercially. Uh, she was in a contest with two other men. She came in second place. Um, so she, she, so I'm reading her book, you know, she stumbled on, she ends up getting killed because she knew too much. In fact, the name of the book is The Woman Who Knew Too Much or The Reporter That Knew Too Much. And Dr. Sarah Weck, a man who I've met last year, um, he did a talk on her about her uh, at the Dallas um, um, JFK assassination conference put on by Judy Very Baker, the seventh annual one. I have the video, and he his whole focus, you know, he's he's done work on MLK, Joan Bennett Ramsey, um, you know, all these famous cases, RFK, JFK. Uh, so this guy is incredibly well thought of. He's a go-to guy for pathology um, and art, uh, specifically autopsies. Um, and so so, um, what did he say? <laughs> Why am I bringing him up? Well, he chose to talk about Dorothy Kilgallen. Now, Dorothy Kilgallen, incredible media giant before there ever was one. I mean, she'd be worth hundreds of millions today. Intelligent woman. But she was, as an um, somebody who was ambitious in the uh, journalism field for for her, her her newspaper in New York, uh, she was involved in one crime after another, uh, crime of the centuries after another. So four crimes... Uh, of the centuries in, in like a 30 year span, right? I, but I kind of, it's almost kind of like a running joke because, um, you know, yesterday in my video, I said, I think I mentioned that um, COVID is um, the greatest hoax in the history of the world. And I, I just discovered that this fellow Dr. Roger Hodgkinson had come up with this, um, statement attributed to him, you know, it was only two days old. Um, now, this could be like, <laughs> I was just thinking of this, this could be something like that uh, the the left puts out, talk about um, gaslighting, you know, they, they which is a term where they, 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 they put out stunts to trick people. And, you know, maybe this Roger <laughs> Hodgkinson, they're ready about to tear him down for, for something else, you know, but um, which will, you know, uh, help their cause. But but just taking it at face value, he said that COVID, and now he's a, he's a virologist and a pathologist, speaking of pathologist, and he's, a, he's a CEO of his own company, um, which does, I believe, uh, vaccine work and research. Well, well um, he said that COVID is the hoax of the century. Now, I have this book, I just, I've had this book for a while, guy Tim Ball and he says the biggest deception in history is human caused global warming and, and I also have a, another book by Grant Jeffries the greatest deception in history I think it's called I think it have it I have it on one of my um uh, Facebook uh, you know screenshots of banners or uh, Anyway, so um, I thought that was kind of funny. 
So Dorothy gets into this JFK assassination. She's searching for the truth too. And, and see, that's my point is we get, we're inundated with things that appear to be true. And they're told, you know, was it Hitler who said, you tell a lie over and over and people are gonna start to believe it. Um, you know, evolution, evolution is another one. Greatest lie in the, the deception in the history of the world, right? That's the third one. I mean, so, and the suppression of the resurrection and, and by omission is, you know, also uh, a, 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 in, a, in and of itself a deception, okay? So my point today is um, the important thing is to develop yourself and the most important trait you could have is having a baloney detector that sees through the fog. Now we have, you know, we're only human, okay? Um, you know, there's a great video by, uh, of all people, Jeff Skunk Baxter is a tremendous guitarist for Steely Dan for all those years. And he went on to be a defense contractor. I mean, this guy is so talented. He he knows a lot and at talented. So he ends up being high and, you know, Congress ended up, you know, putting him on some of their committees, whatever he has, he has um, a, you know, passes or whatever it's called, security clearance. Um, but he, he gave a speech, it's online, and he says, you know, everybody here in this room are ready to give up their life for um, for the for in the line of duty, but would they give up their job if if uh, if they were um, threatened? And and so that's see we're all kind of compromised, and 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 my point is that we don't want to let go of what's given us our income. And so we are foggy about um, baloney, and we accept baloney. So that that's why you need to kind of uh, roll with the punches a little bit in life, and maybe not get that great career going uh, right away. You need to go through a period where you see reality, see truth, and right? and it might cost you your career, and that's a not a bad thing you know so what does it profit a man if he gains that whole world if he's a teacher at a college and he has his academic career or whatever and he's able to provide for his family whatever but he's he's turned away from god and his family's turned away from god and they don't have a vibrant relationship with god and they're really not born again you can see how this can snowball so the answer in my life is, yes, I look at other people, you know, like I said yesterday, my father was president of his high school, you know, president of this, president. <laughs> but then he had four kids before he, he was 30, you know. Um, and life changed for him, you know. He has a saying, wait till life hits you. I guess life never hit me <laughs> Oh, it hit me pretty good, don't get me wrong. <laughs> but what are we, what what are we what are we left with here? Uh, 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 my main point, my main sense of encouragement. See, I get I think I have this gift of discernment and of encouragement that says all is not lost if your career has gone into shambles. All right, it's it's almost a blessing. Because God's bringing you to a point. He wants you not to be fooled by these things that are out there. He wants you to live in truth. We worship God in spirit and truth. We want to be in truth so we're not deceived. And so we can have fruitful and productive lives. See, this is where it's starting to gel a little bit. And then if we're not productive... It might be because we've been fooled by these lies. And they could be theological, too. 
you know, the free will line or the lordship salvation line, or um, or you can lose your salvation line, you know, or or the church, the church government that could be upside down at your church, you know, pastors are bought off today, and then four generations of pastors have been bought off, so you. You, you, not going to church isn't always the greatest thing if it takes away from your growth. You could still have fellowship with people, okay? But if, you, if you're going to church and it becomes uh, a place where you're not growing and, and you're growing in different ways and, you, you know, you're getting kudos for, for the career, but you're really not growing here, then sometimes it's good not to go to church and be in that wilderness, even if it's 10 years. All right, that's it for today. I'm gonna to do one of these. <laughs> Elephants of plenty. Thank you, bye-bye.